Hi, this is Zach OX, and today we're going to go over declaring with static, um, about constants, declare with constants, and what variants are. Um, I believe it was in my first video, I was talking about declaring uh, with data types, and if you didn't know the data type and you didn't put it down, it became something that uh, could be anything. That's what a variant is, and I'm going to kind of show show you what happens with that and how that works, but you want to make sure you declare your, your data types and you really don't want to stick with a variant unless you're really forced to. Um, so we're going to go ahead and start with the standard exe and we're going to go straight to view code. Okay, so we're going to start with statics first and so we'll go option explicit. And the first things we're going to need here is a button to kind of show how this works. Put down a button right here. button, the prefix of button of course. Alright, so I pick back up this window and wait, double click first. Okay, so we got my button. So, Alright, <clears throat> go ahead and declare with static right now. Static. And we're going to use the prefix s for static, but we're going to make it, um, let's go ahead and make it an integer and then we'll just call it value as integer. Now I'm going to show how this works. I'm going to go announce. Now with the static, uh, when you click, this this uh, variable right here is not having to be declared again. Um, it's already declared once and um, the value could change within this procedure and when you come back to look at it again, it stays changed. It doesn't restart. So if I was to say uh, the value is equal to zero, um, but by default it is equal to zero because when it initializes, that's the first thing integers will equal. So let's put one. So it's going to be equal to one. But how, however, if I was to erase this um, after after this ran um, with code, the uh, static integer value would still be equal to 1. So I'm going to kind of show this how, how this what happens, make this a little bit more easier to understand. Sometimes I just don't do a very good explanation, but if you see it, then you get more help from it, so learn something better. Um, the first time it's going to go through is, sure, it's going to equal 0, so it's going to say uh, now that's equal to 1. We're going to go ahead and message that to us. Now this is where I was talking about functions within Visual Basics. We want to use convert string because a message box shows data type as a string, but this is a value one as an integer. Um, automatically, message box will convert this to a string, but I usually do this even if it wasn't message box. Convert the data type properly so you understand um, what's going on, or or you can see. Uh, that it's supposed to be a string at that point. So at this point, it's going to be a string messaged on, on the screen. Um, so what we're going to do here is if I was to run this, the first thing it's going to say it's equal to 1. But what I want to show is that it can keep changing. So uh, let's change. If it is equal to 1, then end if it's equal to 2 now. Now it's not going to happen because the first time it goes through, let me make this bigger. The first time it's going to go through, it's going to look for zero, which is down here. So it's going to say it's one, and then we're going to message box of one. But the second time it comes through, because this is static, it's not it's not re-declaring itself again as, as starting at zero. It's actually staying whatever it is. So it's equal at one at this point. So it comes through. It's going to say it's equal to two. So it'll pass this. And when we get the message box again, it will say it equals 2. So I'm going to go ahead and push play and to show this. So I'm going to hit the message box, or excuse me, the uh, button. And of course, it's equal to 1. But as soon as I hit it again, it's equal to 2. Now, if this was a regular um, dim statement, or excuse me, dim, if I was to dim it, like declare, um, it could never possibly equal because it'll always be equal to zero the first time we click and it will equal one here but then when we come back again it starts initializing zero and you can see this could be helpful um, 
if you didn't have to initialize or you want val the variable to be only within this 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 uh, procedure, this sub, because up here you could start with the private declare um, sint value, but I don't really need it in this case. If if I did, I would have it up here with option explicit. Um, if I'm just going to use it in the sub, then I'd use a static. Okay, so we did our static. Let's change this back. And now I'm going to talk about constants. Uh, declare constant. How you do this is you start with um, c o n s t for constant. Uh, again, you could put anything right here as public or whatever, but we're going to put this private only within this form. And we're going to give it a name, string. Um, I believe for constants, constants, um, people usually put something like C, but um, in this case, since it's just a string anyways, let's go ahead and put C string anyways. Um, then we'll go ahead and put, it is a string, so let's just put mom. <laughs> I'm always putting that uh, as string. But you have to say what it is equal to. Now I'm going to explain this. When you do constants, they don't change. Uh, so this is it like a resource saver. Since for whatever reason this variable is not going to change, we might as well just say what it is now. And it's equal to mom. So for whatever reason, if we're making a variable that's not going to change in the whole program or this form, because this is only under the private scope, um, then we could declare them up here. And this saves resources. Instead of having to go through here and declare something and says equals mom, then we just use the C string mom. Um, so right here, uh, that's how the constants work. Kind of explain. Um, you won't probably use them as much unless you're doing some programming with the API or DirectX or anything like that that does use constants where they won't change. They're just going to be equal to something. Um, so we're going to go ahead and move on to the next thing, variance, and kind of show how this works. Okay, declare variant private. I'm going to put string. Uh, let's put yo. <laughs> And then I don't say anything. I believe it's how it goes. Okay, that is a variant. Um, you could do the same as as variant, but you're not saying what it is, so it's just a variant. It could be any, pretty much anything. Um, that takes up a lot of resources. It can cause a lot of problems in your programming because you're you prefix this as a string, and later on you put it is equal to a string. Um, you may have some complications with that. You need to say what data type it is. Uh, so you can also use variants in the sub um, references. So for instance, if you write your own sub, and this can be really bad, you have to be careful. Excuse me, sub x. And in here we just put um, x or string v. Again, there's another variant right here. Um, it doesn't know what it is going to be. You have to put what it is. So when we call this sub, then we know, oh, it's supposed to be a string. Um, it's going to use string in here. Otherwise, if you don't put that, it's going to be passed as a variant. You can be passing objects. You can be passing any kind of type of data type, pretty much. And it's just going to cause some problems. Um, that's going to do for now. And uh, if you have any questions or anything like that, comments, please give. I um, hope this video showed a little bit of some stuff you don't know yet. If not already, happy to show it anyways. Oh, <laughs> hopefully. Um, until next time.